This is December the 20th. Our lesson is Lesson 3 out of Unit 1. It is entitled Dedication of the Firstborn. And this is out of our standard lesson commentary. Our devotional reading is Second Chronicles, the 30th chapter, verses 5 through 12. And our background scripture is Exodus, the 13th chapter, verses 11 through 16. Also Leviticus 12, verses 1 through 8. Numbers chapter 3 verses 5 through 13 and also Luke the second chapter verses 21 through 39. Our key verse is Luke the second chapter and the 22nd verse and our printed text is Exodus the 13th chapter verses 13 through 15 and also Luke the second chapter verses 22 through 32 our lessons aims are match the presentation of the infant Jesus as the firstborn with its Old Testament antecedent. Compare and contrast modern baby dedication ceremonies in the church with the Old Testament dedication of the firstborn. Our lesson's introduction is titled Order, Order. And the order that we are focusing on uh, through this lesson is based upon uh, two observations or two traditions that were part of the Israel people and that was the Passover and the practice of sanctifying the firstborn as redemption unto the Lord and um, we would like to address uh, those two ordinances uh, that were set uh, by the Lord for Israel. They come up under the guidelines of uh, part of our lessons focus uh, which were traditions uh, observing special occasions and when we look at uh, what takes place uh, in the dedication of the firstborn, uh, here, of course, our focus is on Christ, but it is following uh, tradition and practice and ordinances and laws that were established back in the Old Testament and fulfilled through our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus in the New Testament and so when we look at this uh, we would like to bring attention to how out of the hardness of man's heart and here our focus is on Pharaoh and Pharaoh's uh, intent uh, to slew all of the male children of Israel and because of the hardness of his heart he brought about the tenth plague that was visited upon Egypt and the Lord as it tells us in the 15th scripture of Exodus that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt the firstborn of man and of beasts and it says therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that opened the womb being males but all the firstborn of my children 
I redeemed. The firstborn of my children, I will redeem. When we when we look at this issue of redemption and sanctifying, set aside unto the Lord that which belongs to the Lord, the first of everything, and we are setting it aside that it might be purchased by the Lord. So when we look at the redemption process, it means to buy back by means of payment of some kind. Uh, we know that uh, the scripture uh, tells us that uh, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and he became the ransom for our sin and he became the price that was paid he was sacrificed for our wrongdoing and to really put things in the proper perspective because sometimes uh, we look at situations and we wonder uh, well why did uh, animals have to be sacrificed in the place of uh, men's uh, sins and transgressions and and why did uh, why do they uh, have to kill uh, for the purpose of wrong and wickedness and such and uh, why is the lesson focused on uh, the first of everything the first of mankind and the first of uh, the births of animals and uh, bring the first that you receive unto the Lord that uh, they may be sanctified and then redeemed our focus uh, will go back to the first of things um, we remember that in the Garden of Eden according to the scriptures of the Bible we are told that as Adam uh, disobeyed God as he was disobedient until unto the instructions of the Lord that when once the act of disobedience took place that he and Eve in the third chapter and the seventh verse of Genesis it says that when the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew they were naked they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves a covering something about the transgression brought a different awareness to them than the awareness that they already had now the trick of the deceiver is to make us think that our eyes came open as a result of the disobedience but their eyes were already open for they already saw all that God had given unto them but the deceivers purpose is to make us think that we will see or we will receive a fuller view in disobeying than we will in obeying and it the scripture says that once they had sold this seed of disobedience and transgression that then that shame came upon them and now they felt that they had to cover themselves and so we also uh, see that over in the third chapter and the 21st verse after the Lord had spoken to Adam and Eve about their wrongdoing and their disobedience that 
At that point, God himself took coats of skin and clothed them to cover their own shame. And this coats of skin that clothed them, something had to die. Something was sacrificed for the wrongdoing and the wickedness of ourselves. And because we sacrificed the good thought for the evil thought, then there are consequences to our choices. So when we ask the question as to why do certain things take place? Why are we uh, sacrificing things, uh, uh, animals dying and blood being shed? Uh, what is the purpose of this? Why does this uh, happen? We also uh, remember between Cain and Abel. Uh, Abel brought forth a offering unto the Lord that was pleasing unto the Lord. But Cain brought what he chose. He didn't bring his best. And many times we don't offer our best unto the Lord. Although the Lord gave his best unto us. But we don't want to render back unto the Lord our best. We want to hold something back for ourselves and give the Lord what's left over instead of what's been provided. And as a result that Abel presented his best unto the Lord, Cain became jealous and jealousy set in the envy and the evil and the wickedness. And because he could not deal with the fact that it showed neglect on his own part. He decided to kill the good example. Almost in, in the intention that by removing the good, the bad would look better. And that is the problem that we have. Is, is that as a result of that, Cain was sent off to a barren land. But when we think about why the sacrifices, it is because we have already sacrificed good in place of evil. And as a result of that, there were other accommodations that God made even though we disobeyed, even though we rebelled, God still made provisions for us. He killed animals so that he could provide a covering for us, not because that uh, he thought that what he had created was ugly, but because we became shameful of ourselves and he provided a covering for us. And this covering also is a type of Christ. Through Christ, he became our covering and his righteousness covers our unrighteousness. Yes, this, this, this is the story that we are instructed to tell uh, to our children uh, in the 14th verse of uh, Exodus, uh, the uh, 13th chapter, it says, And it shall be when thy son asked thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the hand of bondage. Uh, the story uh, needs to be told. Uh, unto our children and our children's children um, the purpose of God's uh, initiative uh, when he delivered the Hebrews out of the land of Egypt when he brought them out of bondage that we should continue to uh, impress upon our children that we are not where we are today 
by any act of ourselves, but it was through the redeeming power of God Almighty, the great I am that I am, that brought our foreparents out of bondage and that brought us to this point where we are, but not just to bring us to this point to leave us, but to bring us the Redeemer, the one who paid the ransom for us, Christ. And if we were to live by the example of Christ, we would no longer be in bondage, physical bondage or mental bondage or spiritual bondage. Now, when we look at uh, how the Lord, through this lesson, explains to us uh, how these things were practiced, uh, where the child, Christ Jesus, was brought to the temple uh, uh, for fulfilling the law uh, on the eighth day uh, for the circumcision. Uh, there was a period of purification that had to take place uh, before this was done. And so therefore the scripture tells us that uh, when, and this is in Luke, uh, the second chapter in the 22nd verse, and it speaks to us about uh, when the days of her purification. Now, this takes us back into Leviticus, uh, the 12th chapter. Uh, but it speaks of the period of time of purification. And for the male children, it was 33 days. And then the seventh days were added to it to complete the time of purification and so uh, on that eighth day they were taken uh, into Jerusalem the scripture says according to the law of Moses were accomplished they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord to present unto God that which had been given unto Joseph and to Mary to give back to the Lord that which belongs to the Lord and to sanctify it unto the Lord to set it apart for the Lord's work to fulfill the Lord's will to have the Lord to place his stamp of approval on the child. So when we think about the scriptures speaking of order and the dedication of the firstborn, um, even to this day in uh, our churches and places of worship, we still bring our children to be blessed and to be baptized and to be set apart and to be acknowledged by the Lord. We return unto God what God has blessed us with. And when we do this, we are asking that the Lord would sanctify the child, consecrate the child, bless the child, and also strengthen the parents that we would be the proper examples unto the unto the child to show them the way of the Lord to live upright in front of them so here um, it is written that they would bring sacrificial offerings unto the Lord now, those that uh, had the wealth would bring lambs unto the Lord. But in the 24th, uh, 23rd and the 24th scripture, it tells us that uh, if they were unable, that they would bring a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. But the purpose was, is that something 
was sacrificed because there was a sacrifice made to bring us to freedom, to bring us from a world of sin, to pay the price for wickedness and disobedience. So therefore, that sacrifice was offered as redemption to have our souls redeemed unto the Lord because of the corruption and the wickedness of life in the world. And so when we begin to recognize the significance of our lesson, um, if we would bring the whole order of how things uh, were set, uh, if we look at the promise that was fulfilled when Mary and Joseph brought Christ uh, to have him sanctified, also to have him circumcised on that day. Look at how the Lord fulfilled a promise unto the man by the name of Simeon. Uh, and he was there, but he had been he had been visited by the Holy Spirit, and he was told that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. And so when they brought the child in to fulfill the custom of that day, then Simeon took the child from their arms and blessed him and thanked the Lord that that which was foretold to him by the Spirit of God was fulfilled. And it just brought a full circle that it was the beginning of the Lord's work through his holy child, his only begotten, his firstborn. But it was the ending of another who had been upright before the Lord. And his only plea was, is that will I see your Christ? Will I see the Son of God, the Messiah, before my eyes close? And this was fulfilled. And so it was the beginning of the purpose of life on one end. It was the fulfillment and the ending of life on the other end. We hope that something was shared through uh, the lesson that uh, brought whatever insights or enlightenment that the Lord would have had uh, us to fulfill in this purpose for bringing this lesson forward. And our prayer, as always, is that the blessings, the protection, the provisions of the Lord will always be upon those who are the hearers of his word, but most importantly, the doers as well.